Hello to all of my compounding pharmacy friends and colleagues. My name is Brian Prince. I'm a compounding workflow and lab design consultant, and I specialize in USP 800 compliance. One of the conversations that I have quite frequently is, do I really need to buy a dedicated makeup air unit just for my hazardous drug room? We're non-sterile only compounding. We do, you know, 20 a day, whatever the numbers are, but we have a small room. And that room is, let's say it's a uh, nine feet wide, nine feet deep, nine feet tall. That cube is just a little over 700 cubic feet. Multiply that times 12 air changes per hour, which is the minimum number of air changes as defined by USP 800. Um, and I believe that is 5.3.1 is the table number. But regardless, um, and then I divide that number by 60 and I'm at about 150 or more, maybe 160 CFM. That's not a significant amount of air at all. Although if you've watched a previous video where I talk about never design an engineer system to its lowest common denominator, you would know that I would tell you that eventually that room's gonna fail. So let's just say that we go to 18 air changes per hour, right, as a safety buffer, that's still only 200 CFM, not a lot at all. Now let's throw in another caveat to this equation. I've taken my powder hood, my class one negative pressure powder hood, USP 800 calls it the CPEC, the primary engineering control. I've added the manufacturer's thimble connection to it, and now I've got it connected out of the building via an exhaust board. Now I have externally vented that hood, which again is defined in the chapter. That powder hood, I can tell you, is probably gonna be exhausting about 250 CFM. Now that gets you at about 22 air changes per hour. Great. We've met the minimum number of air changes per hour. It's probably quite sufficient to provide the negative pressure in that room. That's great. But now I'm sending 250 CFM out of the building that I cannot rekindle or recuperate or get back in the system. So some people say, well, what if I took, you know, air from the retail and ducted it over? What if I took some from the, you know, from an office space or wherever and I bring that air and I make that air back up? I'll tell you that if you ever take air out of a space, you still have to replace it, right? Eventually, your building is going to go negative because you're taking 250 CFM little bit by little bit and you're throwing it out of the building every single hour. So again, your building is going to go negative. The one thing you do not want is for your building, for your space, for your pharmacy, for your retail to go negative because what's going to happen is it's going to start to get stale. Mold can grow, all kinds of things can happen. It's just not a healthy environment. Now, if you're in a newer building, good news is, is that you may have defaulted to a newer building code and there could be upwards of 15% fresh air that's being put into that space. That's great. That may cooperate with you. It may not. But I typically see a lot of older pharmacies, older strip malls, uh, family-owned buildings, and their systems are basically almost 100% recirculating air in that space. And the only fresh air that's really introduced into that building is when the front door or the back door swings open and that's allowing more fresh air. So do you have to buy a dedicated makeup air unit? Well, the answer is probably so. Each situation is a little bit different, but I would tell you that you don't want to start stealing air. And this is the biggest takeaway. You don't want to start piecemealing air from around the building to try and make up for it in that particular space. So that's my advice. If you've got any questions about this, please email me at brian at compoundingworkflow.com. Thanks.